Hello chess lovers, Soren here and in this video I would like to share with you a very interesting and double-edged game which was played between Robert James Fisher and Sidney Norman Bernstein. The game was played in 1959 in New York at USA Championship. At the time of this game Fisher was only 16 years old, he was the youngest participant of the event but already this was his third consecutive appearance at US Chess Championship. When it comes to Sidney Bernstein, he was an American chess master who participated in 8 US chess championships. But before starting our game, make sure that you are subscribed in order not to miss my future uploads. In this game, Fischer is playing with white pieces and he opened up with e4. Bernstein responded with e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop b5, we have the Ruy Lopez, a6, Morphe defense, Bishop a4, knight f6, white castles kingside, bishop e7, black is going for closed variations, rook e1, b5, bishop b3, and black also castles kingside. Here we have c3, to which Bernstein responded with a very aggressive martial attack d5. This is a sharp line where black is gambiting a pawn, and this requires a huge theoretical knowledge. Usually players are avoiding this line and are setting up anti-martial systems. But Fischer cold-heartedly played c3 and allowed d5 move. Let's see what's going to happen in this hyper-aggressive line. He takes d5 by Fischer and instead of knight takes d5, which is the main continuation, Bernstein played a very rare e4 move. I guess that this was a well-analyzed home preparation and he wanted to surprise his young opponent. Fischer captured on c6 and in return Bernstein captured on f3. Queen takes f3 and now if we have a look at the position this is move 11 and already white is two pawns up but in return by making bishop g4 move Black is already completing his development while still white needs, needs to solve the development of his queenside pieces. Fischer played queen g3 and this time Bernstein activated his dark squared bishop with the tempo by putting it on d6. Queen h4, well later against Herbert Seitman, Fischer would choose f4 move. But in our game we have queen h4. By the way, that game is also very interesting and probably we should cover it as well. In this game we have queen h4, rook e8, f3, Fischer is both attacking the light squared bishop and is protecting his rook. Bishop f5, d4, finally white is opening up his dark squared bishop's diagonal in order to try to complete his queenside development, but in here Bernstein made a very interesting and aggressive bishop takes h2 sacrifice. Bernstein is considered to be a speculative player and martial attack and typical moves are in his nature. But let's see where is black's compensation. So Fischer accepted the bishop sacrifice by playing king takes h2 and knight g4 check. And already king g3 is forced in order to protect the queen. King g3 by Fischer. Queen takes h4 check, king takes h4. Rook takes e1. F takes g4. Rook takes c1. And g takes f5. Now let's take a look at the position. Against the rook white has two pieces upon but still activating this rook on a1 is very problematic. The computer is evaluating the position as equal. Here Bernstein played rook d8 and a4 by Fischer. He's trying to create a counterplay on the queen side. b4, d5 and rook b8. So far so good. Black's moves were accurate but this rook b8 is a mistake. Instead it was better to capture on c3 and then play a5, neutralizing any possible advancement and counterplay on the queen side. But in our game after d5 we have rook b8, 
which is allowing Fisher to gain advantage. Making use of the fact that the rook left the d file, here Fisher played d6. C takes d6. By going for a pawn sacrifice, he managed to get a passed pawn, and this time he played bishop c4. Bernstein played rook c8, decided to give up this pawn on a6 in the cost of winning the pawn on c6, but once white manages to get a passed pawn on a5, black is facing huge issues. Here Bernstein played rook b6, but this is already losing. Instead, it was better to play b takes c3. Now, if bishop takes c6, then c2, and if knight a3, then rook takes a1, and in this case, black can hope for a draw. Though still, that's going to be a very tough defense. But instead, after bishop b5, we have rook b6, to which Fischer responded with c4. First overprotected his bishop, and now this a pawn will march forward. d5 and a5. g5 check. Understanding that his position is hopeless, Bernstein is starting to rely on cheap tricks. Like, now if f takes g6, then black can play rook takes g6, and can create mating threats. In this case, black is managing to gain advantage, but... Of course, Fischer didn't go for that move, instead he captured on g5 with his king. h6 check, king g4, rook b8, and this time we have a6. And this a pawn is becoming really very problematic for black. He takes c4, a7, rook a8, and bishop c6. Black is in trouble, and victory is just a matter of moves. h5 check. King g5 by Fischer, of course, he could even win the pawn on h5, but he's not even allowing his opponent to announce sh some checks. Rook takes b1 by Bernstein. By giving away his rook, he is managing to win the pawn on a7, but just no way out. Here comes rook c1, and now Black will suffer more losses. In here, rook a2 was played, and rook takes c4, rook takes b2 f6 and finally in here on move 38 we have a resignation because actually black king is in a mating net this bishop e4 is coming and just no way out that's why finally in here bernstein resigned well this was a very interesting and double-edged game by both sides the first path bernstein played nicely but then in the end game he started to make inaccuracies one after another and Fischer demonstrated high end game skills by beating his opponent in a complex battle which arose on the queen side. Well in the end let's also solve a chess puzzle where the task is to find the winning move for black. It's black to move and I will wait for your answer in the comment section. Thanks for watching, here are more suggestions for you, feel free to check them out as well. I will see you in my next video. Take care!